So year eight, we're going to be starting relative frequency or experimental probability today. So both of those things mean the same thing, relative frequency or experimental probability. They're actually both probabilities. So the words relative frequency can be a little bit confusing. They're probabilities. Okay, so if we have a look at what it actually means, both of these things come from the results of an experiment. So some sort of an experiment will be conducted. You'll have all the statistics from that experiment and you then analyse those to get your probabilities. Okay, so we could be rolling a die or we could be tossing a coin or we could be drawing a marble out of a bag. It could be anything. That's what we're looking at as our experiment and then it's the numbers that we get as our results that we then have a look at for our answers. Okay, so experimental probability or relative frequency is a fraction, because all probabilities are fractions. So it's the number of times that the actual event in the question occurs over the total number of time, trials in the experiment. Okay, so if we're looking at a frequency table, that means we want the frequency of whatever they're talking about on the top, and the total frequency, which is sometimes written like this, sigma f, on the bottom of the fraction. Okay, the one other thing you need to know here for some of these questions is expected number or expected frequency. So to find the expected number, that's the ex number that you would expect to get, number of twos or number of sixes or number of heads or number of tails that you expect to get, you get the probability times by the number of trials, the number of times you're going to throw the dice or toss the coin or whatever. So if you look at examples here, we've got Harper rolled a biased die. All right, most dices are not biased, they're unbiased. You roll them and they can land evenly on any of the six surfaces. So each number has an equal chance of occurring. But if the die is biased, it means it's weighted a little bit towards one side and it's more likely to come up on certain numbers. So on this biased die that was rolled 60 times, the number two came up 15 times. That's probably more than you would expect. So it says, what is the experimental probability of rolling a two? Well, a two came up 15 times out of 60 times. So we write the probability of getting the two, the experimental probability, is 15 out of 60. Then you put it in your fraction key on your calculator and press equals and simplify it. And you get one over four. Okay, now part B of this question says if the same die, so this same biased die, was rolled 500 times, what is the expected frequency of rolling a 2? Expected frequency or expected number of times that you would get that 2. So we get the probability of a 2, which we found out was a quarter, and times by 500 times that we would be rolling, a, or rolling this die. Now, if you work that out on your calculator, you get 125. So that means we would expect to get number two 125 times out of those 500 rolls. Okay, we're going to do another question here. The question says, Safina tossed a coin. And she got 135 heads and 115 tails. Now, notice it doesn't tell you how many times they tossed the coin. But coins can only land on heads or tails. So if you add these together, you'll know how many times it was tossed. So 135 plus 115, if you use your calculator, gives you 250. So that's how many times we tossed this coin, 250 times. They want us to calculate as a percentage, we'll get to that in a minute, the experimental probability of tails. So we're looking at the probability of tails. We got 115 tails out of the total number of coin tosses we did, which we said was 250 when we add these up. So 115 tails out of 250 50 tosses. Make it a percentage means times by 100. That's the times by 100. Work it out and your answer is 46%. So we're going to come back in the next video and do a, a longer question with a lot more parts to it.